the cabinet committee on economic affairs has approved the sale of the government's entire remaining stake in hindustan zinc limited or hzl according to the closing price of the company's shares on thursday the sale of the entire 29.5% stake would fetch around 37400 crore rupees as reported by business standard an official has said that the government might sell its hzl stake in tranches through an offer for sale or ofs so far in the current financial year the center has collected 23575 crore rupees in divestment proceeds through the life insurance corporation of india ipo and the offer for sale of oil and natural gas corporation if the center successfully carries out the divestment of hzl it will find itself in striking distance of its 65000 crore rupees divestment target for financial year 2022-23 this is good news especially given the uncertainty surrounding the government's plans due to russia's invasion of ukraine but we need to dive a little deeper after setting ambitious divestment targets in the last 3 years the center in budget 2022 pegged the fy23 target at a conservative 65000 crore rupees the pandemic and the ukraine war have hampered the center's divestment and privatization plans in recent months in april the center missed its revised divestment target for the second time in 3 years even after slashing it by 55% to 78000 crore rupees in the union budget compared to the target the fy22 divestment mop up was 13530 crore rupees which included the 2700 crore rupees received by the center from air india's privatization so what does the relatively better performance this year mean for the government so this particular decision to look at hindustan zinc i think has been uh, something i would say which was a kind of a blessing for the government because from the numbers which we are reading about we are really talking about something of uh, over 30000 crores which is going to be mobilized which will take us very much closer towards the overall december target of 65000 crores so the way i look at it is it's quite possible that the government may also exceed this target this may not be the only disinvestment or the only large disinvestment which the government is talking of but if you are able to uh, complete this within a time span they could definitely be looking at other companies also to disinvest so that they would be uh, crossing this target of 65000 crores and probably move also probably towards a target of something like 1 lakh crores no in fact i think that they will exceed it in the reason i'm i'm emphasizing exceeding the 65000 crores of course achieving it itself is uh, going to be uh, quite uh, uh, useful for the government is because in this particular year we are talking in, in terms of certain kind of revenue slippages which we are aware of something like the excise duty cuts which have taken place for edible oil as well as for fuel so there is a certain hit which is being taken by the exchequer at the same time there are certain additional expenses which are also being incurred by the government and in this kind of a situation there has been talk about whether it's going to affect the overall fiscal arithmetic now when i look at the industrial zinc and saying okay we're coming close towards the 65000 crores mark and i'm going even beyond saying that if the government is really encouraged by this they could also keep looking in terms of uh, going into this investment of other companies too so that you can partly compensate for uh, the loss of uh, revenue on account of the excise duty cuts and also it would help to support the additional expenditure which you're talking about and it, this gives a lot of confidence i think that's more important because we've never had this situation where in the first couple of months we are very close to the disinvestment target so i admit that in some thing will be run over a period of time however the government has had a bumpy ride as far as privatization is concerned in the case of central electronics and pavan hans the nearly completed privatization transactions have hit a roadblock because of the winning bidders having pending legal cases against them on thursday the government announced that it has withdrawn its offer to sell its entire 53% stake in bpcl it said that majority of bidders have expressed their inability to participate in the current privatization process because of the prevailing conditions in the global energy market and according to news agency pti the government is on course with the privatization of two public sector banks central bank of india and indian overseas bank it is also planning to sell indirectly held stakes in itc and axis bank 
and it is also trying to complete the sale of Shipping Corporation of India. Strategic disinvestment of Container Corporation of India is also lined up. So in terms of privatization, I would tend to believe that the government will go slow on it because privatization means we're changing the total ethos of a company from a public sector to a private sector. So it would mean uh, taking all the stakeholders along. So while for something like Air India, which was a clear cut case of uh, privatization, there were all other compelling factors which sort of nudged the government to be more aggressive to go out with a deal, which was a win-win situation, but a thing which had to be done. But, but I don't see a similar thing looking at uh, other PSUs, which are actually doing well, because when we're talking in terms of maybe the public sector banks, which were spoken of earlier, or you're talking of an OMC. These are companies which are very, very good, and which are doing very well, prosperous companies. So therefore, the situation is quite different from that of Air India. And it needs to change this case of change of mindset. We also need to change the ideology and then take in all the stakeholders' interests before you go in for it. So that, to my mind, will still take some time. It's very difficult for a government to get privatization right especially in a context where there's a semblance of democratic accountability. The reason that full privatization is very difficult to accomplish is that it's difficult to get the valuation right. And for getting the valuation right, you have to get the timing right as well. You have to ensure that the credentials of the uh, prospective owners are duly verified, the necessary due diligence has been carried out. The state capacity to take care of all these things uh, is, I'm afraid, somewhat limited in a country such as India's. And that is the reason that the government has opted for a more modest target of privatization in 22-23 compared to the one in 2021-22. It doesn't point to any lack of political will for reform, as critics are apt to think. It is more a recognition on the government's part of the constraints to privatization in the Indian context. And this investment sort of commends itself to the government because there you can say when you sell in tranches, there's a better chance of getting the price discovery right. Because even if you get it wrong in the first instance, you can get it right over a long period of time. Moreover, when you sell in tranches, you're giving the enterprise a chance to improve its performance by being subjected to market discipline and therefore there's a better chance of getting the valuation right. So, does it look like the government has decided to follow Infosys' philosophy of under-promise and over-deliver? If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.